1992, Newcastle United faced Leicester City at Filbert Street in one of the most important matches in their proud 100-year history. New manager Kevin Keegan had always challenged for the highest honours. Now, within months of a second life in football as a manager, Keegan needed a win to save Newcastle from humiliation and the third division. When Gavin Peacock put United ahead on the stroke of half-time, it looked as though Tyneside would be saved from its worst footballing nightmare. But Newcastle United have a long tradition of producing the unpredictable. Less than two minutes to go, and Leicester's Steve Walsh equalises. The idea of Kevin Keegan a failure, surely unthinkable. With the final whistle of such an agonising season ready to sound, Walsh turned from hero to villain. Unless you were a Geordie. An own goal, 2-1 to United. Newcastle's pride had been rescued and Keegan's mission could really begin. It was two separate objectives. The first and primary objective had to be to survive. Um, we were in dire trouble. We were, when I came in February, we were second bottom of the league and we'd played a couple of games more than most sides and we had to go and play eight games away and seven of those games were against teams in the top nine. So uh, in a very short space of time, I had to try and find out who I knew because I'd been out of the game eight years anyway and everybody knew that. Uh, who I knew I could rely on to try and pull us out. So I was desperately looking for a leader, which I brought Brian Kilkline and uh, I see him as very much the leader of this club as far as the players go, even though at times this season he's not been in my team. And um, then at the end of the season it was right, let's make sure that doesn't happen again and let's go and buy the sort of long-term players who've got a lifespan after the contracts ended as well. And I think we did that with the likes of Beresford, Robert Lee, uh, Barry Venison. They were just the right ages. They were just at their peak, and of course Bracewell came along and he was just a little gem that popped up on our doorstep here. Keegan had prepared for his first full campaign in management with 100% boardroom backing and the cash to prove it. Quality and experience were the transfer priorities. United got both when they prized Sunderland's captain Paul Bracewell away from Roker Park. A quarter of a million pounds, nothing compared to the controversy the swoop provoked. 600,000 bought the highly rated left back John Beresford from Portsmouth and on the other flank of the defence another former Sunderland captain Barry Venison arrived this time via Liverpool. Considering Newcastle came within one match of kicking off the season in the old third division the opening day mood was sky high. The fans must have sensed United's season was ready for the most spectacular liftoff against South End. Watson. Looking to get his cross in, and he does. Away by Cornwall. Watson could get a second go. It's Clark, in fact, who knocks it in. And Peacock hit the post. Peacock, the sharpshooter, so quick to get his effort on target. And Paul Sampson did well to get down to it. And finally, the post came to Southend's rescue. Quickly taken. Knocked in towards Kilcline. Oh, that's a screaming goal from Paul Bracewell. Oh, what a start for Bracewell and what a start for Newcastle. Paul Bracewell scores an absolutely screaming goal. Knocked out to it. Bracewell had no hesitation when he came on to that one and he absolutely lashed it past Sanson. South End. Look to respond. And it's fallen loose. And that's a great save from Tommy Wright. And Tommy Wright again denies Sussex. Twice Tommy Wright coming to the rescue there to deny Andy Sussex. And Southend so nearly back in it. Now Peacock. Another good move developing here. Now Peacock, Peacock on the edge of the box, forced wide, knocks it through for Clark. And it's an own goal. 2-0 to Newcastle. Pryor, Spencer Pryor knocks the ball in. But Lee Clark, they well claim that one. What a disaster then. 
for South End, but what a start again for Newcastle. Prior, not a convincing clearance, but South End still looking to build. Newcastle have got it back again. Peacock lets the ball do some work for him as Beresford comes forward. Clark is spare again. Clark turns well. Oh, and so nearly another one. Well, there would have been absolutely no doubt about that one. Pry knocks it forward. Head on there by Benjamin. Sussex looking to turn. It's a good strike, and that's a goal back there by David Martin. Nicely set up. And South End I have edged their way back into this game at 2-1. Sheedy out for Beresford. Back for Sheedy again. Now Kelly looking to get on the end. And it could fall for Watson. If he can get his shot in. He's got support from Clark. This is Clark. Through the legs. And it's another goal for Newcastle. Lee Clark this time. And he'll definitely have that one. Well, it's going Newcastle's way again, and it's certainly going Lee Clark's. But he was always supporting then, and when it came to him, he got the shot in, and Sanson's frustration completed as the ball goes between his legs to Newcastle's third with 25 minutes left. Benjamin, robbed by Howie, and Kilcline no messing. Straight to Powell though, no, Callaghan knocks it on nicely, Sussex, that's a good ball now, Benjamin can pull another one back, and he does so, good finishing from Ian Benjamin. 3-2, but United had been without three key players, Liam O'Brien, Kevin Brock and Kevin Scott, all suspended, but the new boys had come up trumps, with Paul Bracewell marking his debut with his first goal in more than two years. Um, but I got off to a great start, scored a, a bad goal as well. Um, and we got three points. Um, and obviously, like I said, from then on, we, we've, we've kept going and kept winning. Um, so it was a good start. Your goals are a little bit collector's items anyway, aren't they? Very much so, yeah. <laughs> so um, hopefully uh, Newcastle might get a few more. Next came the newly named Coca-Cola League Cup. Mansfield in the first round. Kilcline at the near post there. And a second go at it. Knocked on by Kelly and Peacock's there. Newcastle take the lead, Peacock at the second attempt. Gavin Peacock's first goal of the season, it was Sheedy's corner, Kilcline battling at the near post there, kept his eye on it, Kelly supporting and there was Peacock, 1-0, two minutes gone, Newcastle ahead. So Mansfield pressing forward now. Wilkinson's cross and Stant, 1-1. Newcastle pressing forward again, trying to find a winner. And the advantage to take into the next leg, Lee Clark's out wide, good cross in there. Mansfield get it away again. Venison picks it up, Newcastle trying to keep this momentum going. Now Sheedy looking for a way through, nice ball, nice layoff. Quinn, Quinn. Saved by the keeper and Peacock's there. Peacock again, his second of the game. So Gavin Peacock sent Newcastle into the return game with the advantage. Peacock had been United's leading scorer during the last campaign. Keegan had persuaded the bargain buy from Bournemouth to turn down a close season move to rivals Middlesbrough. After all the talking with the manager over the summer, um, I decided that Newcastle was the best place for me. And um, I felt that it was going to take off here. We're going to buy new players and uh, with the enthusiasm that he's generated here, um, we've got off to a flying start and um, you know, hopefully we'll go on. Presumably it didn't take too many games to realise you'd made exactly the right decision. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you, you could tell in the pre-season um, the atmosphere in training um, with the new lads that had come in, there was you know, quality players at the, at the club um, to go with the players that were already here. And um, you know, we've got off to a flying start. There's a long way to go, but uh, I think that we've got the, the strength in depth to continue. But the transformation really is quite spectacular from a team that nearly went down uh, right to the last kick of the season. What do you put that down to? I think it's a combination of um, getting one or two uh, quality players in and uh, a confidence factor as well because um, now everybody's very, very confident. We've got off to that good start and we're on a roll.
That role owed much to a spectacular display at promotion favourite Starby on the second Saturday of the season. Friends car now. Good ball to the far post and Peacock. His third goal in four days. United take the lead. Friends car did all the controlled work there. The nutmeg. The return ball from Kilkline right up there with the attack. And Castle the opportunity to cross. Perfectly delivered. And there was Peacock. 1-0 to Newcastle. Carr with the throw. And Clark's come off for it. Back for Venison. Accurate, controlled passing again by Newcastle. Here's Lee Clark once more. He's going to have a go as he shoots. And it's there. 2-0. Two in four minutes from United. And Clark, the goal scorer. Clark, once he was away, there was no stopping him. But Steve Sutton will be disappointed with that effort. Derby now trying to find a way back into the game. And Mark Pembridge has pulled a goal back for Derby. 2-1 now. Peacock's inspired form was seen to earn him the captain's role in place of the injured Brian Kilcline. It was a super confident United who faced the next examination of their promotion credentials against one of the teams relegated from the old first division into the new West Ham. Carr comes inside, Scott is up there, a little touch for Howie and Peacock. And Peacock and it's in there and Newcastle have got the lead. Gavin Peacock, the new skipper, got the important touch. 1-0 to Newcastle. Seconds left to go to the half-time whistle and Peacock strikes yet again for Newcastle. Howie battled well, Peacock was there, that was the touch. And it made it without Howie having to follow in. full of industry, he never stops but he got away then and that was quick thinking by Peacock to just get a foot to it and Sheedy Peacock the man of the moment and Kelly and Peacock again and Lee Clark and the whistle goes, does it? No and Kelly and 2-0 David Kelly gets the goal he was praying for against his old club. And it's all going right for Newcastle at the end of this first half. Stoppage time, Kelly makes it 2-0. Hunting around there, Peacock, the creator this time. They were appealing for offside, they had a look around. But there was no whistle, the Glasgow blocked Clark's effort, but he had no chance as Kelly lashed in that loose ball. Newcastle were making light work of a supposedly tough start. The new mood was already a tribute to the motivating qualities of Kevin Keegan and to the bold foresight of the man who gave him the job, Chairman Sir John Hall. He's a winner, basically, in a sense. He wants to win. Um, I got to know him quite well because he's living very close to me here at Winyard. And we have coffees quite often. And uh, I've, uh, my respect for him has, has grown tremendously over the past few months. He's not always a soft option being a chairman is to choose a manager like Kevin because one thing I think with respect everyone's found out he's also his own man and if he's got a view he'll say it no matter who you are. Well, that's fine but I, just as I have my view and he's got his but it's uh, we sit down and we discuss things a, a lot of the time and we come to an understanding and we have a tremendous understanding of where the club has to go. We're both ambitious for the club and uh, we have a tremendous rapport and it's good for the club and uh, I don't see any problems at this moment in time. Next at St James Park were another relegated side, Luton Town, but David Pleat's team were still looking for their first win of the season. Even on a wet and windy Wednesday night, Newcastle were playing sunshine football. Throw in to United then. Clark taking it down neatly. Sheedy. Now O'Brien. Neat passing, Clark through the middle. Pedersen saves it, Clark's kept on going. Newcastle ahead and takes the salute. Inch perfect passing all the way through the Luton Town rear guard. There was O'Brien. Kelly was just robbed. It fell for Clark. Pedersen might have thought he'd stopped it, but Clark was not going to be denied. 1 0. Howie now bringing the ball out of defence. 
Ben's car available in the wide position and looking to open out the play. Chidi as ever available out there on the opposite flank. They won't be hurried here, Newcastle. They're just content to pick out their men. Peacock it is now who takes it up. Clark, the run on the blind side there, but it's forward now for Sheedy. Lovely control. And Kelly! Perfect finishing, perfect passing. Exhibition stuff. What superb control. A great pass from Peacock. Look at Sheedy there. And Kelly delightfully finished. It's all Newcastle now. They're just overflowing with confidence. And this is Peacock now. And Sheedy supporting, forced to turn and look for the support. It's there, of course. O'Brien now shaping up, and Pedersen did well. Another 2-0 win and a third goal in four league games for 19-year-old Lee Clark. The Wolves End-born midfield player was looking a class act, with all his early promise now sharpened by new consistency. Yeah, when Kemp first came as manager, he plumb for experience. Uh, to avoid the relegation battle, and uh, he was proved right in the end, but uh, thankfully I'm in the side now. Was that hard to take at the time? Very much so, you know, I'd had a bit of a run in the first team, and uh, being a jolt lad, it was, it was a great honour to play at Newcastle, but uh, I was out of the side, and it's just something I had to accept. Now, what about in the summer? Did you have a bit of a chat with him to try and sort out your future? Yeah, most definitely. I just wanted to reassure us that I had a future in Newcastle United, and he was very adamant that I did, and uh, that was good enough for me, really. Well, the manager and uh, the coaches give us a lot of freedom in the player and uh, just like to get us involved in, in most of the attacking situations and uh, that's great for me because that's the way I like to play my game and uh, it's been great news because I've, I've, I've been allowed to do, do what I wanted to do really but in, in the context of working with the team and it's been great. Three out of Newcastle's four opening wins had been in front of their own emotion-charged supporters. Bristol Rovers' non-league home at Twerton Park Bath was as big a contrast as the new First Division could offer. And United came up with a very different style of performance. They were goal down within two minutes, John Taylor putting Keegan's team a goal behind for the first time that season. Now it was the time for Newcastle to show they could scrap with the best of them. The flowing football that had won so many instant admirers was based on determination and a ruthless streak of professionalism. Right on the edge of that six-yard box, and Sheedy! A goal on a plate for Kevin Sheedy. His first of the season, that's the equaliser, right into that top corner. Tommy Wright then forced to play that ball deep into Rovers' territory. David Kelly so full of running. Now Kelly is away with some space and some time. He's had a good look. Dinked into the middle there, and O'Brien! O'Brien, 2-1. Kelly waited for the big Irishman. There was the header, Newcastle ahead. Rovers with this free kick then, Ian Alexander to take it. Good save from Tommy Wright, he did well there. Long ball forward, it's the substitute Saunders on the chase, played into the middle there. Tommy Wright in trouble. Stewart, oh, how did he get to that one? Tommy Wright. After the match, Keegan said Tommy Wright's goalkeeping display was probably the best he'd ever seen. But Wright was by no means the only key figure in a defence that last season had been the worst in the Football League. A new central partnership was emerging between the established Kevin Scott and the surprise of the season. Sunderland-born Steve Howie hadn't exactly set the world alight in his early games as a striker, but once Kevin Keegan had switched him to the back four, he suddenly looked a composed and authoritative defender. Even club captain Brian Kilkline couldn't shift him out of the first team. Um, in five sides, I did well, come back there once or twice, but I uh, never really thought about doing it in a, in a game. But it wasn't until when the manager now came and, um, and sort of seen us at the back. I think it was the first time I played was against um, the New Zealand side. And um, it just went from there. Are you surprised how well you've settled into that position? I am. Um, I used to enjoy it when I, when I did play in there on the five sides, but um, you know I enjoy it there now playing, you know, in the proper matches. So um, I am a bit surprised, but um, it's a nice surprise. Now, as a forward originally, do you think that gives you a lot more confidence to play on the ball than than you might have had if you'd always been a defender? Um, I suppose so, but um, you know I think everybody in the team now, even why right, through through the squad, 
all the lads are very comfortable on the ball, so um, you know everybody likes to get the ball in play, so that's what we all do. And now, of course, with the change in the back pass law, you've got to be able to play the ball about, haven't you, really? Oh, I am. Um, but then again, you know, we're going to always pass it back to Tom because he likes to fiddle about with it a bit. While young Steve Howie was grabbing his big chance, one famous Newcastle man was finding it hard to get a look in. Portsmouth was United's sixth league game, and at last, into the starting lineup came Mick Quinn. Clofford losing out to Lee Clark, who was too quick for him. And Clark's carried on a great run. Kelly is pointing where he wants it. It's come deep for Mickey Quinn. Mickey Quinn scores for Newcastle. Quinn is back. And Mickey Quinn, classic, and a superb break by Newcastle. Played by the running of Lee Clark, who started the move. Played such a positive run. He whipped in the cross, and that is meat and drink to Mickey Quinn. This is Beresford. Quinn. For Clark. Quinn. Oh, so quick again, Mickey Quinn. And Alan Knight must have got a touch. Now Lee Clark skipping through defenders. The touch by Quinn. David Kelly. Beautifully taken by David Kelly. Another classic goal. Sheedy now. Beresford racing through in support. Sheedy thinking about the shot, but it's come for Beresford first time. And Mickey Quinn. And Mickey Quinn gets his second. Well, that goal disallowed then for offside with Quinn celebrating. Beresford again looking lively. Friends' car is over there. Clark gets away from his man. And Quinn this time. And it's three. It's the second for Mickey Quinn. And no one will take that one away from him. Whittingham, almost out of nothing. Without a doubt, though, it was Mickey Quinn's day. But he wasn't the only Pompey old boy to return that afternoon. John Beresford had been sidelined since the second Saturday, but now could resume his partnership with Barry Venison. According to Keegan, the best fullback pairing in the country. When I came here, we had a couple of you know players signed, such as like say, Paul Bracewell and Barry Venison. I expect us to have a little bit of an indifferent start, but um, like you say, you know people finding their feet. But the way it went, you know, it's beyond my dreams. I think it's not just the results that have been so impressive. It's been the sort of football the team has played. Now, presumably, the encouragement is there to play football right from the back where you are. Yeah, um, like I say, I like to play football. And Barry Venison coming from Liverpool, he, he sure does. Um, and like I said, but you got to give credit to such as uh, Ken Scott and Steve Howey because like. To be honest, it's the back four, you know, everybody's got to help each other out and uh, everybody's helping each other, which is, it, we've benefited from it, you know, me and Barry coming into a strange side and uh, really enjoyed it. The easy route out, it's gone now, you know, the little uh, lazy back passes, it puts a little bit more on us on the full backs and you've got two options, you can either lash it into the stand or you can try and turn and play on it and luckily for me and John Bresford this season, we found ourselves quite comfortable. But we've got good players around us who make it easier for us. I mean, it's not down to me and John, it's down to the players around us. Uh, the last thing is that we can lay it back to Tommy, and Tommy's quite comfortable in them situations. But yeah, I think it makes it a little bit more interesting from the players' point of view, but especially from the fans, because they're seeing a lot more football and people are having to work harder to make the ball work. By September the 19th, United were top of the table. The fans couldn't get enough. Against Bristol City, the gates were shut half an hour before kickoff. Yet another chance then, probably for Kevin Sheedy, or is it Liam O'Brien to have a go? And O'Brien, a cracking goal from Liam O'Brien. What a perfectly struck free kick. Madison gets the return. Kelly. Kelly, and they've got the penalty. The offence against David Thompson. So stoppage time at the end of the first half. Gavin Peacock, 2-0. And once again, it all goes right for Newcastle at the end of the first half. Sheedy with the throw. Clark. 
Back for Peacock. Peacock goes for the line. And a nice little header there, just over the top by David Kelly. Clever stuff from Kelly. Beresford to Carr. Clark. Sheedy, that was a great ball from Sheedy to Peacock and to Carr. And it's in, it's a goal by Franz Carr. Oh, where did he get that one from? Franz Carr, his own brand of goal scoring. And it went over Keith Welch's head and into that far corner and the keeper left absolutely stranded. Venice and now with an acre of space ahead of him. Peacock and Kelly both want it. Kelly for Peacock. Peacock going and looking for the penalty and getting it. So Peacock with a chance of his second penalty of the game. No problem for the skipper. It's 4-0 now and Newcastle are walking it. O'Brien, Clark, O'Brien again. All the way out there for Brock. It's five. Kevin Brock seals it. Clark, Beresford, Peacock, through to Clark, and Peacock. Oh, wonderful save by Keith Welch to deny Peacock the hat trick. A five goal, five star performance. Keegan had even left Quinn on the bench despite hitting three goals in two games, but who could argue with the manager's decisions? And taking his share of the goal scoring glory, Liam O'Brien, the real linchpin of Newcastle's dynamic form. O'Brien was a rare commodity in the fast lane of British football, a player who could collect the ball from his back four and then direct the flow of midfield traffic. I think when Liam O'Brien looks around now, he feels confident in the fact that he's got, he sees Barry Venice on his right side, he sees Robert Lee on, it, on, the, on the wide right of him, he looks over at left back and sees Beresford, he looks behind, he sees, you know, he, we've got a youth and experience blend now that works. It, you know, youth on its own won't win anything. And uh, I think Liam O'Brien has, has, has be, become a player again. Uh, I mean, he always was a good player, but he's become a, an even better player because he feels confident now with what's around him and because we've got a good team. After seven games, United were turning away around 5,000 fans a match. Keegan approved an inspired signing. Another of the chairman's signings, this time from Glasgow Rangers, was doing the business off the park. Chief Executive Freddie Fletcher had few illusions when he joined Newcastle. Well, the first task in January, remember, was to see whether or not the club could be saved because there was a real possibility that uh, perhaps the club had, was beyond saving. And... I don't think there's any shadow of doubt, had it been any business other than a football club, then what you would have done is not try and save it, but put it into liquidation. But because it was a football club, and the importance of the football club to the region and to the supporters, you obviously take another tack. Oh, we're basically getting our act together. Uh, we have to look at the income sign. We're doing the redevelopment plans for the grant. We're going to have a master plan for the next 10 years to say to the fan, this is the way St James is going to be because we have to be in the Premier Division, that's where we're going. There will be a European League eventually, I believe midweek. We've got to be part of that. I want Newcastle and that is hat thrown into the ring. And to do that, off the park has to be put right. Redevelopment proposals, marketing proposals, tremendous changes in the marketing of the club, tremendous changes in the image of the club. We're a people club, and I want, it's, it always has been, and I want the people of the North East to feel, in a sense, it's their club. And very soon, basically, these ideas will be put over. We just started Fan of the Month, for the fans, and uh, this is a recognition of their support. Their support is tremendous. 30,000 now lead every game. There's hardly another club got that support. And everything's coming together, but the team behind the team is really working well. Despite a magnificent seven wins out of seven, Keegan still wanted new players. With more boardroom backing, he bought Robert Lee from Charlton for £700,000. It was a major blow to Premier League rivals Middlesbrough, who had also been in the chase. Within hours of first meeting his new teammates, Lee was pitched into the deep end against the Borough. This Coca-Cola League Cup second round tie was the pick of the draw. A two-leg confrontation with a Middlesbrough side in impressive form would be yet another measure of Newcastle's real worth. It proved an absorbing affair, with United's brimming confidence matched by the commitment and organisation of Lenny Lawrence's team.
both sets of supporters fully appreciated the quality of football and realised the final outcome could go either way. Newcastle's emergence as the team of the season was pulling in the fans home and away. More than 14,000 packed into Peterborough's London Road ground. And it's Davy Kelly through the middle, shaving for the shot against the crossbar. Kelly follows up, and the flags are oh, desperately close. Robert Lee plays the ball in, and Kelly again. How did that one stay out? Scott. Kelly turning, and Brian takes over. Inches away again. Settled it then, scored by a player signed for his top flight quality and experience. Kevin Sheedy was proving another inspired swoop into the transfer market. I came at the end of last season, even though we were in a relegation battle, the supporters were tremendous and um, they're not just coming now because we were doing well this season. I remember last season, 25,000 at St James's for a relegation battle and I don't think you'd get that anywhere else in the country. What about the style of football the team has been playing? It's very much a passing game. Presumably that suits you absolutely fine. That's right. I mean, when I, Kevin Keegan first spoke to me to come up here, I had no hesitation coming. And um, even last season, he, he tried to get us to play football. Um, we didn't do it very successfully, but uh, he kept to his principles. And um, I think everyone who's been to the games this season have enjoyed the games. And uh, it's tremendous playing in the side, a football inside. And if we do eventually go up, then, uh, then we're going up the right way playing football. Newcastle seemed to be locked into a twice-a-week playing schedule. The newly introduced Anglo-Italian Cup hardly rated as top of the club's priority list, but the board slashed the prices for the decisive preliminary round game against Leicester City, and 14,000 turned out to see another demolition job. Kilkline challenging there, it's fallen for Brock and he scored! Nine minutes gone and Newcastle ahead. Sheedy, those corner kicks, such a constant danger. Kilcline was challenging there and Brock came in first time. The free kick hit deep into enemy territory. O'Brien picks up the loose ball, having a good look around. Oh, what a marvellous pass to Christensen who's up there. Good effort, giving the chance of a first team out in Christensen. Brock, square for O'Brien. Sheedy, delicate little touch through to Kelly, could be something on here, penalty, Russell Holt brings him down, Nicky Quinn from the spot, no problems, 2-0 right on half time. They all want to get in on the act, this is Nielsen now striding forward and not far away either. Rock's corner, chipped into the near post. Leicester trying to get the ball away. O'Brien's picked it up, looking for the shot. No way through there. Free kick. Will Smith who brought him down. It was a good-looking run developing as well. Now, what can they do from the free kick? O'Brien, or would it be Sheedy? It's Sheedy. It's another goal. It's perfectly taken. Two dead ball experts there. It was Sheedy who took the initiative and took the chance. Leicester trying to find some sort of way back into this game. Gary Mills and Cerny checked down well. He's got a point to prove as well. Stimson knocks it forward. Quinn, he's onside. Good turn. Great finish. Mickey Quinn, 4-0 now. Brian Little's team were promotion rivals, but Keegan had made seven changes to his winning lineup, and United's shadow squad were still too strong by a street. I think the, the way the gaffer, well, the gaffer came into the, the club last year and uh, his philosophy was, you go out and do the business and I'll look after you. Um, I was playing at the start of the season, um, thought I was doing all right, got an injury, which happens in football, and uh, 
the two lads that are playing in my positions have been playing out of the skins. Well, not out of the skins, they've just been playing well. And I've uh, got no qualms, no arguments. I've just got to sit and wait and bide my time to get a chance. Newcastle's all-conquering form was set for the wider stage it deserved. The Sunday game at Brentford was live on TV. More than a million viewers in London and the North East switched on to another irresistible display. And Kelly, and he's got it. It's a goal for Newcastle. David Kelly on the break. He just got a sniff of it and he was straight in there for that opening goal. Just what Brentford didn't need and just what Newcastle did. They all stood and watched, didn't they? Yep. And David Kelly certainly did not. And David Kelly, this is his fifth goal of the season. I don't know whether they've just been a bit over-enthusiastic, perhaps, at the start, Lenny Brentford. They've worked, worked very, the they've worked very, very hard. They're trying to play 100 miles an hour. They've missed it now. They have a chance. Great save from Tommy Wright. That was by far and away the clearest opening that's come Brentford's way. And Gary Blissett will know that that should have been 1-1. Smiley has got round Venison and he's recovered his balance. Smiley looking for Blissett in the middle. The ball's for handball, the referee well placed there. Now here's Godfrey. A fine save, Tommy Wright. Here's Robert Lee through the middle. Now for Peacock. Here goes Peacock again. Now Lee Clark. Skipping round the outside and wide for Beresford. And Lee turns. Was it in? It is now. It's Gavin Peacock. It's 2 0. And just when they were looking under that spot of pressure, Newcastle, they have come up with the perfect answer. And those fans who made their way down from Tyneside are jumping again. Just had a little bit of a chance to get back in the game, Brentford. They've thrown that away. They've been caught on the break yet again. Good play from Lee Cart. Good hard low cross in there. Robert Lee's got himself on it. Good turn. Hit the other side of the bar and Gavin's followed up and it in. Game over. Statham now taking the ball forward. What a bad ball towards Blissett. He's got away. And now Newcastle were on cloud nine. And if Peacock had returned from injury to seal the win, then David Kelly's goal was just reward for another afternoon of selfless running combined with high quality skills. I've been quite pleased with my form, you know, and uh, as you say, I, I've scored a couple of goals as well, which has been, it's always nice. If you're being a centre forward, if you're playing well and you're not scoring, it's not a substitute to, to actually hitting the back of the net. Um, whether it's the best form of my life, I'm not too sure. I, I had a couple of good seasons when I was at Warsaw. I know it's a few divisions below, but um, I've played quite well for a few seasons there and done relatively well at Leicester as well. So, uh, but it's got to be the most enjoyable part of my career so far. As a striker as well, the sort of football Newcastle play must be very important to you because there's so much mobility that the service you're getting must be terrific. That's right, yeah. That, that stems from, from the good players that, that are playing behind us. Um, myself and Gavin or myself and Mick um, appreciate the lads from, who are behind. You know, um, As I said before, the players he's brought in, John Beresford and uh, Barry Venison, have done, done excellent done excellent jobs as fullbacks. Kevin Sheedy's uh, brought a little bit of class, a bit more class into the midfield. And Liam, Liam and Clarkie are, are, are doing tremendous themselves as well. So it's, uh, it's nice to play in front of those sort of players. There was just no end to the excitement if you were a Newcastle fan. Next, it was renewed hostilities with the Teesiders. Level pegging after the first leg, but United hadn't won at Ayrson Park in 28 years. Surely this was the toughest challenge yet to the claims that Newcastle were a Premier League club playing in the Football League. Borough fans might have been waiting for the Tynesiders to be put in their place. That was very much the pattern of recent years. But United were in history-making mood. It was another thriller. Gernigan backpedalling. Kelly now. It's falling well for Kelly. Superbly finished by David Kelly. And it's Newcastle who take the lead. First blood to Newcastle. That's what those fans think of it. A brilliant finish by David Kelly, streaking away from the Middlesbrough defence. Kernigan caught backpedalling and Kelly was away. It fell comfortably for him, a little touch of the chest and underneath Ironside. 1-0 to Newcastle. Forward for Tommy 
right. Now can Middlesbrough find something in stoppage time? And Wilkinson! That was a chance by Paul Wilkinson's standards. And the whole good enders really getting behind their team now. Into the middle for Wilkinson! 1-1, one, one. Wilkinson! He was too quick for the Newcastle defence then. Scott bringing this one forward towards Kelly. Kelly jumping well for it. Kelly again. And not that far away. Slaven picks it up. Howie. Did well to find Beresford. It was a long way forward considering they were under pressure. Good running by Lee Clark. Kelly wants it ahead of him. Kelly was unmarked. They picked up now. And it was an awkward bounce. And Peacock and wide for Quinn. And there for O'Brien. What a goal from Liam O'Brien. That's a superb strike. Newcastle take the lead again. O'Brien. What a tremendous strike. They worked the opening, the touch was good, O'Brien wasted no time inside that post. Terrific finishing, Quinn's little layoff was inch perfect, Gittins taken out of it there, and he whacked that past iron side. The ball through to Robert Lee, and Lee Clark, no offside, Kelly in the middle, Kelly! It's all over now for Middlesbrough, surely. David Kelly, so simple for him. But that is a knife right through the heart of Middlesbrough. Robert Lee, Lee Clark, a tremendous run. Slid the ball across there, Kelly was waiting, so simple, so lethal. So Newcastle had ended the Middlesbrough jinx and they'd broken another club record that was set 83 years before. Their unbeaten run now stretched back for 17 games. I mean, it's an incredible start for everybody else, and, and it got the country talking about Newcastle United again. And it got the fans believing that, hey, something's going to happen at last. And uh, I think that's why it was very important. I mean, people say it takes you years to turn a place around. It doesn't if you've got the right people. And by that, I mean the players. We've got the right players here now. We can add to it, of course. There'll be injuries, there'll be players losing form. That's in inevitable in football. But uh, we've got the nucleus of ear, ear of a squad that can, for the next two or three years, represent this club in, at the highest level, I believe. And so to the 10th day of the 10th month and the 10th win. It all began perfectly with Keegan sharing his Manager of the Month award with Terry McDermott. Tranmere Rovers were the designated victims of Newcastle's perfect 10. And it's Kelly away now, square into the middle and Peacock, just past the upright. Beresford linking with the attack, Clark wants to take it on, square for O'Brien who can hit them. Beresford again, Clark looking up all the time, square for Peacock and a second attempt. Oh, it deserved a goal. Nevin. This is dangerous from Tranmere. It still could be dangerous, but Aldridge couldn't reach it. Venison now. Square for O'Brien. Quinn. O'Brien. He's got the cross in. And Kelly. David Kelly. What a tremendous goal for Newcastle. Beautifully worked. O'Brien never stopped running. The layoff was perfect. He nearly lost it then, but his power took him on, and there was Kelly, and that's the goal. A 30,000 lockout crowd that day. All home games were made all ticket after that. Kevin Keegan had made Newcastle a sellout attraction. We decided, and I say we, it was a collective decision really, that it's about time this club stood up and be counted. You know, uh, there was too much of this, well, don't talk about promotion, you know, because it put pressure on the players. And, don't talk about this and don't talk about that. And then we looked at it and we analysed it and we said, hold on, we, we do pay Premier League wages to the players here. They are Premier League players, most of them. And we've got a Premier League crowd. And it's the sixth, fifth biggest club in this country in terms of attendances. And probably this year it might even go higher than that. So what's wrong with saying that the place we should be is the Premier League? And I, and I, and 
I don't make any, I've no regrets at all about saying that. That's where we want to be, that's where we should be, and if we play like we have, that's where we'll deserve to be. I always thought in my football life that Manchester United were probably the biggest club in Britain, with Rangers, a club I was associated with for five years, the second biggest. I now believe that it's possible that this club is the biggest club in Britain, if it's allowed to reach its full potential. And are you confident that that is going to happen now with the present management set up on and off the pitch? Yes, indeed, I am. I am. And how vital is it that the team gets into the Premier League for next season? The only place this club should be is at a very top level. Um, this area deserves a Premier League club. The fans who are magnificent deserve a Premier League club. I also believe that a successful Newcastle United would make a whole focal point for the northeast of England and contribute towards a more successful region. So it's absolutely vital that we're in the Premier League. It won't happen overnight. It'll take time. And you need people there who basically have the vision and the capability to take it through, and Kevin has all those. Now, Newcastle have had promotions in the past. They've gone up and come back down again. Do you really believe that this time, if the team can get up into the top flight, that the, the big push to being a major club is really going to happen for once? Yes, yes, undoubtedly so. The, the, I wouldn't be putting all this work in if I didn't feel that. And uh, we, it is a lot of work, a lot of hard work. And if we can get the base right, and this is what we're trying to do on the park and off the park, if we get the crowd to continue to support us, they have to understand this. The gates are important, 30,000 gates are important, not just for the finances, but in a sense it puts us in a position where other clubs start to look at us and say, hey, look at these gates, look at these fans. And we can throw a hat on the ring because of that support and say, hey, we're one of the top five, take notice, we're here now, and uh, we'll get our act together. And it's very, very necessary to get this base so that we can have stability, long-term stability, and not have the movements up and down. We can become consistent in the future, which is what Liverpool's and the Man United's have done for many, many years. We've got to be with them. When people ask you how big is this club, we have to honestly say we don't know. Um, because every week something happens that, that amazes you. You know, I mean, uh, we could possibly be the only club in the league that sells out in season tickets, the total ground. And that at a time when every other club is, would be just happy to sell as many season tickets as they sold in the previous three or four years. So uh, we just don't know how big this club is. The only thing we do know is that we are privileged, and I mean privileged, to be in charge of a club that is the biggest in this country, in the terms that it's never been achieved here. It's been done at Liverpool, it's been done at Man United, it's been done at Celtic and Rangers, it's been done at Tottenham Hotspur and Arsenal, it's been done at Leeds United. Hasn't been done here. So uh, we're about to find out. The results obviously have been incredibly impressive so far, but it's the manner of the winning as well that's been so important. Was that important to you, that the team should play with style and play so attractively? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to... I mean, success at any price for me is not, the, is not sweet success. I mean, uh, the fans here, and they're the ones who really count, the fans at Newcastle United want to see good football and a successful side. And I believe it's in that order. If we had a successful side and they weren't seeing good football, there would be something very much missing as far as the Geordie fans are concerned. The fact that we've been able to do it so far in the style and, uh, that we have has been really what has made the town buzz. It's not just the winning of the games, it's how we've won them, it's how we've played. It's the fact maybe that every week five different papers are, are, are picking five different men as the man of the match. We've got a team and it's Newcastle United now united in every way and uh, that's from the top from the chairman who gives great leadership and he's got some great ideas and and, and uh, i wouldn't knock him on any of them some of them are, you know would maybe shock people but i remember the same fella building the um, metro center and i remember a lot of people laughing at him and saying you can't do that and you won't do this he did it and i think you know providing we keep the stability here and we get that same leadership and the same backing that we've had and then it's about the players. It always has been about the players and it, and it always will be. Uh, they're the key people.